Okay, Mitsubishi Triton uh, that is cutting out. We have a P0093 fault code uh, for fuel leak detected. Um, so this has been to another workshop and had thousands of dollars spent on it. All new injectors, new suction control valve and it's still got the same issue um, where it cuts out uh, just periodically. Uh, basically it goes, it can be restarted but goes into a limp home mode and it is um, bringing up this fault code for a severe fuel leak which um, it doesn't have, it's not leaking fuel everywhere so my suspicion is the fuel pressure sensor but we're going to do some testing and find out. We have some um, uh, some information here to follow through to do some testing okay so these are probable causes fuel leakage or fuel line blocked failed fuel injector okay they've already been replaced um, failed suction control valve that's already been replaced failed rail pressure sensor that's the one I'm sort of suspecting just as a hunch but um, that hasn't been replaced Heart wiring or harness damage um, the fuel pressure relief control valve, the fuel pressure limiter valve, that one has been replaced or failed engine ECU. Okay, so those are the options that we're looking at there. Okay, let's um, follow through the process here that we have. Um, so are there any other codes? We're going to go with no um, detection of fuel line leakage. No, it's not leaking. Step three, release air from the fuel line. Well, our problem is that this one isn't playing up all the time. It only does it um, once in a blue moon. It's hard for us to get it to play up at all. Um, so that's not going to be um, our issue at the moment. We can't prove that. Um, engine oil level check for step four. We can do that. Um, and what that's starting to get at is... Um, you know, if the DPF's not burning off or, um, or injectors are leaking and you're getting diesel into your oil, bringing the level up. Um, actuated test injectors. So all our injectors have been replaced already. Um, but you're basically checking injectors at that point. Okay, so again, this is all injectors, all of this stuff here. Cool. Just leaving the wall there so you can read that if you need to. Wait for more than five minutes um, to make sure that the fuel pressure sensor reads zero. Our one does do that. result normal let's go to 11 okay so if it's not if it doesn't do that then you gotta check your wiring and stuff um, power supply line for damage basically checking your harnesses power and earth check harness all that checking that wiring Okay, diagnosis code be checked after replacing the common rail assembly and fuel injector tubes. Okay, so that common rail assembly will include that pressure sensor. Okay, and then if you still get the code then you've got to replace the engine at ECU. So you've spent all that money doing all that, because that's not cheap. Like, um, replacing this assembly, it's not cheap at all. Then to find out that it's an ECU problem, so that's not really helpful. Okay, so this information, um, it's actually out of the uh, Mitsubishi service manual. 
is not really any help to us uh, because we can't have the fault occur while we have the vehicle. If we could do that, um, we could th look at the things like our live data um, and get that um, sort of information, see what the sensor's reading, see what the desired fuel pressures are, all that sort of stuff um, to give us a bit more direction, but we can't do that because it won't fault um, while we have it. Uh, so basically the long and the short of that is, aside from everything else that has been replaced, the next step is the fuel pressure sensor um, and then the relief valve, and if not that, then the ECU, that's where it that information lands basically. Okay, so with this one, so much of the stuff has been replaced. This is what it looks like. This is the fuel rail. The pressure sensor goes in the back of the fuel rail. That limiter valve is in the front there. Um, so that's already been replaced. If you go genuine, you have to replace this whole rail. Okay, um, but our code is directing us to this pressure sensor and that is what makes sense um, that it would think it's got low pressure because the pressure sensor is going out of whack because our one is hap happening intermittently um, we can't get it to fault while we have the vehicle um, what we've suggested to the customer is that we just replace the sensor um, and for what it's going to cost you for just that sensor um, it's going to be the equivalent to us spending hours and hours just trying to get the thing to fault so that we can prove the fault. Okay, so we are going to replace that um, and give it back to them to drive for a much longer period of time than we can do and uh, basically go from there. I know generally we prefer to be able to test a component, but if the component is not failing while you have the vehicle to test it, then that's not so simple. So sometimes we have to go with a very, I would say, a very well-educated guess, um, especially in our scenario where everything else has been replaced. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that's been replaced that definitely would not be my first go-to for, um, for this code. Um, you know, if you had leaking injectors, I wouldn't think that that would be logged as a severe fuel leak. Um, but if this sensor claps out, then yeah, that's that's what it's going to read as. Okay, so we're going to replace that and uh, give it back to them. So this will be going back to the customer now. We have replaced the fuel pressure sensor in the end of the fuel rail. Okay, um, right in the back end against the firewall. Um, that's what we've done because so much other stuff has already been done. That's about all that's left uh, before we uh, start looking at the computer. So we'll give it back to them and see how that goes. Okay, so just to update, um, I spoke with the driver of this vehicle um, the other day. It's been well over a month uh, since we did this repair and he does a lot of Ks every day. Um, and he has had no faults, um, and he said before it definitely would have faulted, you know, within the first couple of days type of thing. Um, so, yep, just the pressure sensor. So all that thousands of dollars spent on other stuff was not necessary. All it needed was a fuel rail pressure sensor, uh, which is much cheaper than all that other stuff. So definitely a good place to go to first. Okay, I hope that has helped you out today. Don't forget to click a like and subscribe for more real tips from Real Mechanics.